welcome 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 to my channel for need biology and competitive exams today we will discuss about the exception of mendelian inheritance traits that is exception of dominance recessive traits we will discuss that why the complete dominance is not occurred in some cases not in all cases it is not a common rule that always dominant allele will be expressed fully but in some cases dominant allele if present in single copy they are not able to produce the same phenotype as produced by two copies of dominant allele so so many traits so many matters we will discuss today so let's start with incomplete dominance first we will see that what is actually the gene and allele and trait relationship slightly here though we know that one trait is one gene in case of mendelian common mendelian inheritance normal mendelian inheritance one trait is determined by one gene and one gene is actually two allele here i have shown that a particular gene where a flower color gene in this case is determined by two alleles of same gene this is the same gene this is a flower color gene and this flower color gene is determined flower color gene is each each gene each flower color gene in this case this flower color gene has two allele and capital r smaller this is a dominant allele and this is a recessive allele so trait is flower color determined by gene flower color gene and it has two part that is two allele one gene determined by two allele these two allele capital r smaller capital r is a dominant allele smaller is a recessive allele now what happened here the capital r why capital r and smaller is determined because when a normal or a wild type gene allele is there when normal type allele is there it is a normal that is it is fully expressed and it will able to produce a functional enzyme a fully functional enzyme so why it is dominant and in case of recessive here the recessive allele is slightly produce slightly altered enzyme that particular altered enzyme has many fate that is normal wild type allele this is a wild type enzyme this is a wild type and this is altered this altered enzyme this altered enzyme produced by recessive allele so all in all cases the recessive alleles produce altered enzymes that particular enzyme helps to produce a particular trait particular character we will discuss later here now so in this case normal r that is dominant gene produce dominant allele produce normal enzyme this normal enzyme is functional here the functional enzyme but it this if it is present in recessive manner recessive allele may have so many cases this is altered that is a triangular but in this case this is slightly shape is changed slight change so why say are same gene but allele they are dominant and recessive allele condition so these enzymes altered enzymes either behave like a normal enzyme or they may behave like abnormal enzyme that is non functional enzyme or they may behave as a no enzyme so this is due to the mutation slight mutation so allele so what happened here that's one trait is determined by one gene one gene is determined by two allele two allele one is dominant allele another recessive allele dominant allele produce functional enzyme and recessive allele produce 
may functional or non functional enzymes when recessive allele also produce functional enzymes that, that is a not that is a normal mendenial traits so what happened here the common example here the in case of snapdragon where according to if you cross one red flowered snapdragon plant with a white flowered snapdragon plant what happened the f1 plant expected what this is a this is a red color this is a dominant dominant allele two dominant allele is there and this is a recessive trait and determined by two recessive allele it is determined by two dominant allele so according to the mendelian trait all f1 should be the capital r smaller because here the r gamete here the r gamete so according to the mendel what happened this should be of red colored but in this case you will ex you will see that f1 will all are the pink color why pink not red because in this case one capital r in case of pink this is a gamete this is a gamete and the, when there two gamete are present here capital r is or capital r here the dominant allele produce functional enzyme but this one is not produce functional enzyme rather truncated enzyme rather truncated enzyme that is abnormal enzyme altered enzyme this is a functional enzyme so in here one copy is functional enzyme another copy is non functional or altered so why the red phenotype is not produced that is the substrate if suppose what is color color is actually the product and to produce the red color one substrate suppose s will be converted into r suppose red and for this two dominant allele is required one dominant allele is not able to produce this r rather intermediate pink and then r so so this is a substrate this is colorless and if one r is present then pink will be produced if two r will be present then red color is produced so when one r is produced then one r one r is present that is one r is present then pink color developed when two r is present then red color is developed so in this case f1 in this f1 case the full dominance has not occurred that is this allele is not fully dominated over this small r or recessive allele so why pink color developed now if they are cross intercross then what happened this two two f1 if crossed then the capital r capital r there is a normal uh, it is a normal uh, what it is called punnett square normal punnett square what happened here now that is the red pink pink red why pink that is the one copy of r is there if one copy of r is there then colorless product is not able to produce red it able to produce r uh, pink so where the one copy of r is there one copy of dominant allele is there no red is produced pink color is developed pink color is developed but when two copy of dominant allele is there that is two copy of functional enzyme is there then substrate is converted into totally red colored here the here the red colored when both copy are absent then substrate remain as a colorless that is white no pink no pink no red transformation so substrate is not transformed here okay now if that particular small r that particular small r if was functional like that of capital r that is that allele will be normal of that of uh, like that of a, uh, this wild type allele then what will happened then all this plant will be all, all this flower will be f1 in an f1 condition all this flower will be of red colored because then 
no problem was there both are functional this what happened in case of tall plants when we crossed a capital T and small t capital T capital T and small t small t what happened capital T and small t are here the, and the small t and capital T are more or less same that is the small t is not truncated and the small t's product and capital T's product is more or less same and not affect the phenotype of the trait. So this one is most important. Another, so in this case the phenotypic ratio is red, pink, white, 1 is to 2 is to 1 and genotypic ratio is also 1 is to 2 is to 1. So phenotypic genotypic ratio is the same in this case in complete dominance, remember it. Now in this case what happened? This is a round colored pea plant seed. This is a wrinkled pea plant seed. So they, when they crossed, they produced round colored pink, round colored seed. And among the round colored seed, when they crossed, then what happened? Three to one round and wrinkle produced. So this is a normal Mendelian inheritance. But if you carefully notice microscopically, see the starch granule size. What happened here? When both the capital R is present, both the dominant alleles are there, then large size of dots here, the large size of starch are produced. When small r is then very small amount of starch are produced, but when they are heterozygote condition, then intermediate type of starch granules are produced. That intermediate type is looking like round. So why? Actually, the intermediate type are here confusingly by outside we are seeing that they are round but if microscopically if we will uh, determine the phenotypic trait then we will see that actually the not the 3 to 1 of round and wrinkle actually starch granule size if we will consider as a phenotype then starch granule size if we consider the starch granule size as a phenotype then large small starch granule size media mid, intermediate and small starch granule size large intermediate and small starch granule size this is a phenotype and if we consider this phenotype then it is the incomplete dominance and if we consider only the outer size it is a normal complete dominance so all complete dominance is actually not the complete dominance sometimes they are incomplete dominance and in our naked eye, they are not actually tested. So, genotypic trait is here is what 1 is to 2 is to 1. But phenotypic and genotypic is same if we consider the starch grain size and if we consider the shape of the seed, then it is the 1 is to 2 is to 1. Uh, it is the 3 is to 1 phenotypic ratio. So, this is the overall actually the incomplete dominance. Incomplete dominance is totally determined by the, the enzyme produced by the dominant and recessive alleles. If the both enzymes are functional, dominant and recessive alleles are both same, then no problem. It will show the Mendelian inheritance type. But if dominant and recessive allele produced to different type of alle, uh, enzymes, then the problem will arise and F1 will not produce as it uh, not so the rule of dominance. So, this is a most important. Thank you.